Well, I've been fairly busy with the old Markland donkey engine. As you can see, I've manufactured a few of the parts that we need. <coughs> you will notice that there are um, blocking studs basically in the two holes for the whistle and for the blowdown valve. Now, I was actually very lucky. I managed to find a blowdown valve and a whistle <coughs> on eBay in Germany. They're not exactly the right ones as in not from this model but they are extremely similar to the ones that would have been fitted to this model so i'm not going to make those i'm hoping that those will fit and that will take care of those two parts but i have made the other bits that were missing i've still got a little bit of work to do on various things i haven't made the pulley yet that's the next job but we'll uh, we'll let it come around and you can have a look at the various different items that have been produced so there's the safety valve. It's pretty good. It, it's it's not far off looking like what it's supposed to look like. The only bit I can't do uh, quite correctly yet is the very top. The very top, I'll bring my pointy stick in here. That should be a small round ball on the top there and I don't have any way of forming that. I really need to grind up a form tool that will create that because many safety valves, uh, particularly on German engines, have that on the top. Yeah, so so that is, but the rest of it pretty much looks like the original valve, so I'm, I'm quite happy with that. There's the chimney. That turned out okay. Quite pleased about that. Um, that is pretty close to what the actual chimney on the original would have looked like. Uh, obviously, I haven't got any accurate dimensions. I've had to take the guesstimate it from, you know, the the pictures that I had that I got off of the internet. On the subject of the chimney, it was made on the lathe almost entirely using this little form tool I've got here. If you haven't got one of those and you're into model steam engines, I thoroughly recommend you, you, you invest in one of these. This is absolutely brilliant for making things like that chimney. As I said, I used that almost entirely to make the chimney. I did use the, I, I did an in-cut on the main body with the uh, parting off tool, but the rest of it was all made using this little shaping tool here. Got a nice little cap. On the oiler cup now, I think it's probably a little bit taller than the original cap, but other than that, pretty much, pretty much the same. And it seals, which is the whole point, really. That's the important bit. Now, the other thing that we made, and to be honest with you, was the most difficult part of all of this, and that is the little regulator valve. Now, I'm going to, um, <laughs> I'll take it out and show you that of the out of those things that I've m made for this. That took me the longest. I still need to make a wooden handle for it, but that'll be one of the last things I do. I'll turn that up on the lathe also, but I'll take that out now so you can have a, a closer look at it. So why was this so difficult? <clears throat> well, first of all, it's very, very small. As you can see, there's my finger. Secondly, not surprisingly, there is a taper on this shaft here. And of course, also through that shaft, there is a little tiny hole which allows the seam through. Now, Okay, turning tapers is not particularly difficult if you've got a decent lathe um, and it's very easy to do that on the Warco. However, it's very difficult on small pieces of, of, of metal like, like that. It's very difficult to hold them and, and so forth so that they're rigid, so that you can turn the taper. And also, you know, you've got to work out what the taper is because there's nothing to tell you. Um, so I'll show you how I did that. So here's my little sketchbook again. So you can measure the um, hole size at either side of the block. So I know that the wide end of the taper is 4.5 mil and the narrow end is 4 mil. And I know the distance between those two is 6.5 mil. So here I've drawn the thing out actual size, but times 10. So from that, I can then create this triangle here, which will allow, which will give me the known sides I know the opposite and I know the adjacent and we're after that angle. So simply to get that angle, it's the tan of three over 65. And that will give me the, the angle that I need for, for cutting the taper. Now, as I'm sure you're all aware, <coughs> the tan, sine and cosine tables are available in both the Engineers Black Book and the little Roebuck Zeus book. So you've got them there if you need to look up uh, angles, but if you don't have those books or you don't have them in hand, there's a, there's a quick and easy way you can do this. Uh, and I'm sure you've all got something similar to what I'm gonna show you next. 
Now, I'm sure you've all got one of these or something very similar to it. This is an old iPhone 8. And the iPhone 8, well, all iPhones, in fact, and I'm sure all Android phones do, also have a calculator. Now, on the iPhone, the basic calculator, that one, is pretty Mickey Mouse and totally useless. However, if you turn it on its side, you get a much, much better calculator. And this one is very, very useful. So on this one, we'll select second function because we want uh, tan to the minus one. Now it was uh, three divided by 65, which equals that. And we know that the two sides we're looking at are opposite and adjacent. So opposite over adjacent schoolboy trigonometry, that is tangent. So tan to the minus one should give us the angle. And there it is, 2.64. Simple as that. So if you haven't got those tables in the in the little books uh, kicking around, but you've got one of these, you know, handy, it's bloody useful for working out angles real quick. So uh, there you go. So there we go. Um, the next job will be to make the little pulley. It was a two-step pulley, which threads onto there with a nut on the end of it. And I'll do that while I'm waiting for the blowdown valve and whistle to arrive from Germany. And then once all the fittings are made, the next stage will be to strip it all down, clean up the boiler and repaint the base. So it's coming along nicely. I'm quite pleased with it so far. Um, I have run it on air and it does work as it is, but of course that doesn't mean anything. Totally different running it on steam. But yeah, so at least now I think you can get some idea of what it was supposed to look like, you know, and what it will look like, hopefully, you know, when it's finished. But um, right, onwards and upwards.